Meanwhile, have you been given a high electricity bill and you are convinced that you did not consume that much electricity in a month and you do not also have a prepaid meter? A federal lawmaker drew the attention of the Senate to this problem. He says the failure of electricity distribution companies to provide meters to Nigerians has left many at their mercy through estimated billing. A man who is paid 18,000 naira, who is expected to buy a bag of rice for 25,000, who is expected to buy a bag of maize for 20,000, is going to pay electricity bill of 25,000. Mr. President, why I know that many bourgeois and capitalists have the capacity to pay any amount the discourse are asking them to pay, we must also realize that we have the masses, the have-nots, the oppressed, the unemployed, the pensioners, and even civil servants who do not have the capacity to pay these astronomical bills. The provision of meters to electricity consumers has been a lingering problem in the country. Electricity distribution companies have over the years set targets of the number of meters it hopes to supply to residents, but these targets have often not been met, leaving residents to pay electricity bills which the distribution companies can often not justify. Mr. President, there is no solution in sight. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Privatization has more bad news for the country regarding electricity supply. The way the privatization process took place, the difficulties we have, Dino, Mr. President, there is no solution in sight. That is the reality. There is no solution in sight. They don't have the money to buy the meters. They don't have it. They have no money to pay for the meters. They are technically bankrupt. So, unless we revisit the entire privatization process, unless we understand and dissect what went wrong, nothing is going to happen. You will still get estimated billing. I'm not holding brief for anybody. We have a catastrophe on our hands. There, there will be no light in Nigeria under the current structure. Regardless of what we say or do today, there is no hope in sight. The Senate has mandated its Committee on Power to look into the astronomical electricity billings by distribution companies across the country. To ensure that Nigeria has a legal framework on climate change to coordinate all efforts, strategies and programs of government, a legislation on the matter has scaled second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill also seeks to establish the National Climate Change Council, which will help in identifying and mobilizing financial resources to support climate change actions across the country. The sponsor of the bill also made it clear that the issue of climate change has led to developmental and security challenges, which this legislation seeks to address. So many other countries that are not even up to the size of Nigeria either in terms of population or in terms of resources, have indeed moved ahead with climate change laws. So what we intend to do, achieve through this effort, is to ensure that we have a law that guides actions and activities as far as climate change is concerned. It is important to note that climate change has been identified as part of the causes of developmental and security challenges that we face in the country today. The shrinking of Lake Chad has led to drastic reduction in agricultural activities in the Northeast. Causing migration of herdsmen, farmers, and others that previously depended on the lake. Desertification and droughts, these have all combined to create migration problems. And what have we harvested from there? Because we have not taken action, some of these individuals who have been affected have already moved. And in the course of their movement, they have created problems for the nation. We had a chat with the coordinator of the Global Legislators Organization for a Better Environment, Mr. Innocent Honor, 
who spoke on the need for parliament to enact legislation on climate change. Some of the policy areas which GLOBE tried to focus on uh, covers um, basically climate change issues, uh, forest governance issues, and uh, natural capital initiative. But since inception, um, you know, uh, we've been able to pass a climate change law in the last assembly. Unfortunately, it wasn't signed. The same thing happened in the sixth assembly. It wasn't assented to. Um, well, in 2017, uh, we had a media press briefing where our president and vice president, the current president and vice president of Globe Nigeria, Senator uh, Buka Abba Ibrahim and Honorable Samuel Onibo, spoke to members of the press, you know, to give them, uh, to, to, to collaborate with and inform them about this new framework bill that hopefully, you know, has gotten more stakeholders' engagement uh, compared to the past versions of the bill and hopefully we'll be able to get the support of the, of the executive and move forward from there. So that's just one of the piece of legislation that uh, the group you know, is able to rally support and be able to ensure that uh, issues as, as, as critical as climate change is able to be addressed at the legislative level in Nigeria. The point of entry will have to be uh, the, the recent um, Paris Climate Change Agreement because uh, it's uh, it's a, it's a broad-based agreement that covers several areas about the climate, about our climate, how global emissions can be reduced by two, two degrees centigrade. And if you look at some of the mechanisms, which are usually either mitigation mechanisms or adaptation mechanisms, that will lead to this gradual but steady reduction in global emission, carbon emissions. Um, the use of renewable energies uh, falls as one of the strategies that we use to achieve this agreement. Now this is what we call it today on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.